Icelandic volcano grounds aircraft across Europe. An enormous ash cloud from an Icelandic volcano has caused the biggest flight disruption since 911 as it drifted over northern Europe and stranded travelers on six continents on Thursday. Officials said it could take days for the skies to come safe again in one of aviation's most congested areas. The ash cloud floating miles above Earth and capable of knocking out jet engines wrecked travel plans for tens and tens of thousands of people from tourists and business travelers to politicians. They couldn't see the source of their frustration except indirectly when the ash created vibrant red and lavender sunsets. Non-emergency flights in Britain were canceled and most will stay grounded at least a few days. Authorities in Ireland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland and Belgium also closed their airspace. France shut down 24 airports including the main hub of Charles de Gaulle in Paris and several flights out of the U.S. had to double back. Depending what happens what the cloud does this could last a couple of days said Kyla Evans a spokeswoman for air traffic agency Euro Control in Brussels. The agency estimated at least 5,000 the 6,000 flights were canceled on Thursday. We anticipate that 50% of all flights from North America to Europe will be impacted tomorrow, it added. On average, there are 600 flights a day between Europe and North America. The volcano beneath one of Iceland's biggest glaciers began erupting Wednesday for the second time in less than a month triggering floods and shooting smoke and steam miles into the air, even melting parts of the glacier. An aviation expert said it was the first time ever that an ash cloud had affected some of the most congested airspace in the world, while a scientist in Iceland said the ejection of volcanic ash and therefore disruptions in air travel could continue for days or even possibly weeks. At the present time, it is impossible to say when we will resume flying, said the spokesman for Copenhagen's airport in Denmark, where some 25,000 passengers were affected. The ash plume, which rose to between 20,000 feet and 36,000 feet, lies above the Atlantic Ocean, close to the flight pass for most routes from the U.S. East Coast to Europe. With the cloud drifting south and east across Britain, the country's air traffic surface service banned all non-emergency flights until at least noon on Friday. The move shut down London's five major airports, including Heathrow, a major transatlantic hub that handles over 1,200 flights and 180,000 passengers per day. Irish authorities closed their airspace for at least eight hours and aviation authorities in Denmark, Norway, Sweden and Finland took similar precautions. Ireland did say later that it was reopening two airports as the plume had shifted farther east and France Officials shut down all flights to Paris and 23 other airports. Airlines in the United States were canceling some flights to Europe and delaying others. In Washington, the FAA said it was working with airlines to try to reroute some flights around the massive ash cloud. Flights from Asia, Africa and the Middle East to Heathrow and other top European hubs were also put on hold. Ash can shut down jet engines. The highly abrasive 
microscopic particles that make up volcanic ash pose a serious threat to, af to aircraft because they can affect visibility and get sucked into airplane engines causing them to shut down. The ash can also block pitot tubes which supply vital instruments such as airspeed indicators or latch onto engine blades forming a glassy substance that may cause engines to surge or stall. Ash will also damage all forward-facing surfaces on an aircraft such as the cockpit windshields, the wings leading edges, the landing lights, and air filters for the passenger cabin. It was not the first time air traffic has been halted by a volcano, but such widespread disruption has not been seen since the September 11, 2001 terror attacks. There hasn't been a bigger one, said the president of the U.S.-based Flight Safety Foundation. A spokesman for the International Federation of Airline Pilots Associations said it was a unique event. Normally, these volcanic eruptions affect air travel in areas of thin traffic like Alaska or in Indonesia and the Philippines. At Heathrow, passengers milled around looking at closed check-in desks and gazing up at departure boards listing rows and rows of cancellations. The National Air Traffic Service said Britain had not halted all flights in its space and living memory although most flights were grounded after September 11th. Heathrow was also closed by fog for two days in 1952. In Iceland, at least 700 more residents were being evacuated on Thursday due to rising floodwaters caused by melting ice from the eruption. Several hundred people were escorted out Wednesday night as water gushed down the mountainside, raising rivers up to 10 feet and cutting the island nation's main road in half. Some ash was falling on uninhabited areas, but most was being blown by westerly winds toward northern Europe, including Britain, some 1,200 miles away. It is likely that the production of ash will continue at a comparable level for some days or weeks. But where it disrupts travel, that depends on the weather. It depends how the wind carries the ash. At the present time, it is impossible to say when we will resume flying. Volcanic ash is formed from explosive eruptions. Particles as hard as a knife blade range in size from a small as one twenty-five thousandth of an inch to one twelfth of an inch. The Geological Survey says ash can melt in the heat of an aircraft engine and then solidify again, disrupting operation. When there is lava erupting close to very cold water, the lava chills quickly and turns essentially into small glass particles that get carried into the eruption plume. The risk to flights depends on a combination of factors, namely whether the volcano keeps behaving the way it has and the weather patterns. We're sitting in the north wind at the moment. Yes, these are more signs. Everything is connected. and The weather is also a sign of the transition these are the end times transition days. Transition is an ongoing continuing process happening daily all around the world.